Hi everyone, I'm William Moses, and I'm going to be presenting joint work on Enzyme, High Performance Automatic Differentiation of LLVM. Many algorithms in a variety of fields, such as machine learning and scientific computing, require the computation of the derivatives of functions in order to compute their results. When working with large code bases, however, manually writing such derivative functions quickly becomes intractable, or in the case of dynamically generated programs, impossible. As a consequence, the community has developed tools to create such derivatives automatically. These tools tend to lie in one of three different categories. The first of which is to create a new differentiable domain-specific language where all functions are differentiable. This requires writing the entire code base in the DSL, and the DSL must of course support all operations made in the original code. This can be fast, however, if the DSL matches the original code quite well. The second technique is known as operator overloading, in which a tool provides a differentiable version of existing language constructs, such as types or functions. While this requires less rewriting, the user may still need to rewrite some of the code to use the non-standard language utilities provided by the operator overloading tool. These also tend to be dynamic, storing instructions and values to be later interpreted rather than statically compiled ahead of time by the tool. The third technique is known as source rewriting, in which the tool statically analyzes the program to produce a new gradient function in the original source language. This, of course, requires all the code to be available ahead of time, which makes it difficult to use with external libraries. All of these tools tend to follow the same pipeline. First, you have the code in the original source language, which is differentiated by the tool, producing more code in the original source language. This is then lowered and optimized to produce the final resultant binary. As we'll see now, this pipeline is not necessarily optimal. Consider the following program norm, which normalizes a vector by calling the mag function n times inside of a loop. First, we can perform a common compiler optimization known as loop invariant code motion, in which we can move the call to mag outside of the loop, resulting in a total runtime of O of n rather than O of n squared. If we first run this optimization and then differentiate the function, first we have the original source code, which is O of n, computing the forward pass, followed by a reverse pass, which computes the gradients. We note here that this also runs in O of n time. If, however, we were to just differentiate the function without running the optimization first, we would see that both the forward pass and the reverse pass run in O of n squared time with the function calls to mag and the differentiable d mag inside of the loop. We could then attempt to run the optimization after the fact to try to get that speed up again, and we note that this does work for the forward pass, however the reverse pass still has the call to dmag inside of the loop as it uses the loop local variable dres. As a consequence, it's quite desirable to run AD after first running optimizations, and there's two techniques that one can use to be able to do this. The first of which is to effectively embed a compiler into your AD system and rewrite all compiler analyses and optimizations in said AD system. The second is equivalent to embedding AD into your compiler and instead performing AD on the low level post optimization representation. It's historically thought that AD is more effective in high level languages rather than the traditional ones such as LVMIR and as a consequence, this latter approach hasn't been explored so much. Specifically, our approach is to do that latter approach and to perform AD on optimized programs by performing AD inside of the low-level LVM representation. Specifically, we present Enzyme, a source, mode re a source rewriting tool for LVM that's able to produce gradients of statically analyzable code. By doing AD after optimization, we're able to achieve a four and a half times speed up and as a consequence, state-of-the-art performance with existing tools. Because we work on LLVM, we're able to differentiate code in a variety of languages such as C, C++, Julia, Rust, Swift, etc. By providing two packages, PyTorch Enzyme and TensorFlow Enzyme, we also let researchers not familiar with LLVM use foreign code in their ML workflows. Finally, by leveraging LLVM's support for link time optimization, we're able to do support multi-source AD as well as libraries. So one might then ask, why did we pick LLVM? It can be thought of as a cross-platform assembly that has many front ends for a variety of languages. Because it also has well-defined semantics, we can create derivatives of the various functions with relative ease. It also has a large collection of optimization and analysis passes that can be used as utilities to make it easier to create the corresponding gradient functions. However, working at such a low level does have its downsides. For example, suppose we were to try to copy eight bytes of information from destination from 
a source to the destination, not knowing what that eight bytes was. And the eight bytes underlying might actually be one floating point, uh, one double piece of data. We would have to do one eight byte floating point add to do the corresponding reverse pass and compute the gradient. However, if we were instead to see that there were two floating point pieces of information inside of it, we would have to do instead two floating, two four byte floating point adds. And unfortunately, as these two operations are not compatible with each other, we would get the wrong result if we incorrectly used the wrong one. Thus, we created a new interprocedural data flow analysis that detects the types of the underlying data in order to work around this problem. In particular, each value is given what's known as a type tree, which is a set of memory offsets to the corresponding type. For example, if we had the following type, which is a struct of a double then an integer pointer, and a pointer to that type, we would first have x, which is a pointer to the type type, which contains at offset 0 the double, and then at offsets 8 a pointer to the corresponding integer. We go ahead by first initializing the type trees from any information we have to begin, which comes from constant information, type-based alias analysis information, and any known instructions. From here, we perform a series of fixed point updates where every instruction inside of LLVM has a particular type propagation rule. For example, the integer add instruction, if it has two integers as its arguments, we know that the corresponding result of that will also be an integer as well. If there's any particular type that we need to be able to determine for correctness, we will provide a compile time error if it cannot be deduced statically, thereby allowing the user to provide that information rather than transparently creating an incorrect code. We also implement a standard utility inside of the AD world known as activity analysis. This analysis determines what instructions could potentially impact the derivative computation. For us, this allows us to avoid taking meaningless or unnecessary derivatives. For example, what really is the derivative of the CPU ID function? An instruction is defined to be active if and only if it can propagate a differentiable value to its return or to some other location in memory. By building off LLVM's alias analysis, as well as our new type analysis, we're able to do a much more efficient job of activity analysis. For example, if you know that a function is read-only and it only returns an integer, all such function calls are inactive since it cannot propagate the address to its return, since it's an integer, or to any memory location, since it's read-only. We also use what's known as shadow memory to store the derivatives of values. In particular, for all active values, we'll go ahead and allocate in zero shadow memory to store the derivatives of all of its occurrences. All data structures also need to have a separate shadow data structure created. For anything that's defined inside of the function that Enzyme's differentiating, Enzyme will transparently create shadow allocations and stores for all such data structures. If, however, you pass in a data structure as an argument to a function that Enzyme differentiating, you will also need to pass in a shadow version of said data structure. This is also useful for being able to get the results of a gradient out. For example, if you had a sum function that had a vector input, you'd also need to have a separate shadow vector that will store the output of the gradient. The overall enzyme differentiation algorithm works as follows. First, perform type analysis on all of the data, then perform activity analysis on all of the data, and finally synthesize the derivatives. This happens by first creating a new forward pass that mirrors the original code, and finally creating a reverse pass that inverts all instructions and blocks in the original code to be able to compute the derivatives. These particular instructions are known as adjoints. Let's take an example, a look at an example. Suppose we have the following function relu3, which computes relu of x cubed. The C code for this is on the left and the LVM is on the right, resulting in the corresponding CFG. We can also notice how we might actually want to call this in practice at the bottom with a call to enzyme autodiff, the function being differentiated, and any corresponding arguments. First, we go ahead by deducing which instructions in the original program are active. In this case, it's the argument, the call to pow, as well as the result that's returned. From here, we go ahead and allocate in zero shadow memory for all active instructions. We then go ahead and create differentiable adjoints for both the original instructions as well as the blocks in the original code. In particular, if we were to look at the pow instruction in the original code, we would have the following adjoint, which says that dx is increased by three times x squared d call. These adjoints are done in reverse order from their original program. After doing a couple of optimizations, we get something that looks quite nice and is essentially the optimal hand compiled program for this. 
However, some of these adjoint instructions may require values that are computed in the forward pass. For example, if you were to take the gradient of x times y, you would get the result x times dy plus y times dx, requiring both x and y from the original function. For all such values, we're going to go ahead and allocate memory to be able to store these values for later use in the reverse pass. Notably, values computed inside of loops require special handling, and we instead of storing them directly create an array that's indexed by the loop induction variable. This particular array is allocated statically if possible, otherwise it's dynamically reallocated. The reason for doing this is because if you might have a different version of the value inside of the loop for every distinct iteration. Let's see an example of this. Suppose we have the following code, which takes in a vector x and multiplies it by a vector of reads. Again, on the bottom left, we see that we have to pass in to the enzyme autodiff function, first the function being called the input, as well as a shadow where the result will end up being. On the right, we have the corresponding LLVM for the function. Again, we begin by going ahead and taking the active variables, which in this case is the argument, the things being summed, and the result. Here we go ahead and allocate in zero shadow memory for all of these active values. And then we also make sure to go ahead and cache any forward pass values that are needed in the reverse. In this case, we cache the call to read as well as creating a 10, a 10 size array of doubles where we store these. We also make sure to free any corresponding memory we create. After some lowering and optimizations, we get the following code, which first includes the forward pass, which also stores the calls to read inside of an array, as well as the reverse pass, which uses those calls and creates the actual gradients. If we do a couple more optimizations, we get something that looks quite nice. Something to note here is it's highly desirable to be able to optimize all of these cache operations away. In particular, by carefully doing this caching in a form that LVM understands, existing optimization passes can often optimize this away without no additional work. However, we also found a couple of additional optimizations to be quite useful. First of all, we use alias analysis to prove that recomputing an instruction is legal, and as a consequence, we don't actually need to, need to go ahead and cache it. Similarly, we can also detect which values we're going to actually need in the reverse pass, and we don't cache anything we don't actually need. Finally, we don't cache any values that we've already stored an equivalent version of elsewhere. Function calls also require a little bit of extra handling as well. As we've shown in all of the examples, we compute both the forward pass and the reverse pass in the same function whenever possible, because this allows for additional optimization and reduces memory usage. However, there are cases in which this is not legal, either because the function is recursive or memory isn't modified in a way where you have to compute these in distinct locations. In particular, we use LVM's alias analysis to detect the legality when it's possible to compute these together, and if not, we will create a separate forward pass version of the function that caches the values that are later sent to the reverse pass. Indirect function calls also require additional help. In particular, we use shadow memory to be able to get around this. So normally when we compute the adjoint of a function, we simply look at the function pointer itself and then create the new function. However, if it's an indirect call, all we have is a value. We're able to use shadow memory and instead say that we're going to create the function, the gradient of the function whenever we see it and store it inside of memory. And as a consequence, um, we put that shadow version, of, we put that function we compute inside of shadow memory. Therefore, when we ever want to take the adjoint of an indirect function call, we simply extract out the corresponding shadow pointer, which therefore contains the corresponding reverse gradient function. We also allow users to be able to specify custom forward and reverse passes. This is quite useful for either users who have a better algorithm than the default that might be used for doing a differentiation of a particular function, or if there is code that is not accessible to Enzyme. In particular, this is done by attaching LVM metadata on top of functions. We also, as shown, provide a mechanism inside of Clang that creates an attribute that puts that metadata on automatically. LVM is also able to perform differentiation on both um, multi-source codes as well as codes with libraries by leveraging link time optimization and what are known as fat libraries. These techniques, in essence, ensure that the LLVM for all of these pieces of code is available at link time. And by performing, therefore, the automatic differentiation step after that, we're able to ensure that we have all of the corresponding LLVM bit code available and then perform the differentiation. Overall, to be able to evaluate our approach, we took a large set of benchmarks from Microsoft's AD suite and additional benchmarks that are of technical interest. 
we evaluated enzyme against itself in which we first ran optimization, then enzyme in a subsequent round of optimization, as well as first running enzyme with no optimization, and then two subsequent rounds of optimization. This is done to keep the same techniques everywhere, but to mirror what would happen and explore the potential of running optimization before or after AD. We also evaluate the two fastest AD tools inside of AD Bench, which again is followed by two rounds of optimization. We find the following results. On the y-axis, we have the relative speedup, where a speedup of 0.5 denotes that a program took twice as long as the program with a speedup of 1.0. Overall, we see that Enzyme is four and a half times faster than REF on average. And if we look between Enzyme and REF, we see that most functions or most programs have a sizable increase in performance by using Enzyme as opposed to the reference. However, the latter two, FFT and the Brussels Rater test, were already highly optimized and doing additional optimizations in LLVM didn't result in much of a, a speedup. And as a consequence, both Enzyme and REF have roughly the same performance as well. From here, we can also evaluate how Enzyme compares with existing tools. For particular benchmarks like the LSTM or bundle analysis, by also looking at how much of a speedup Enzyme has over REF, we can conclude that a lot of the speedup that Enzyme has is as a consequence of the, diff the ability for it to run optimizations, since roughly the difference between top and odd in Enzyme is similar to that of reference in Enzyme. For others, this isn't entirely explained by the ability to run optimizations, and that's because Enzyme has a different mechanism for its cache than traditional tools like top and odd and Enzyme, just being a different implementation. Additionally, ADEPT stores everything dynamically inside of a um, series of instructions and values that is later interpreted as opposed to Enzyme, which is able to statically compile everything ahead of time. Notably, the three examples, Euler, RK4, and FFT are not run on Toponod because Toponod was not able to run on those successfully, and thus the red X. We also provide integration for Enzyme into various ML frameworks to make it easier for those without LVM experience to leverage Enzyme. In particular, we use Enzyme to be able to differentiate external code, and as a consequence, users can simply call external code without having to do any additional work, simply using Enzyme to get the additional derivative necessary to use it inside of their machine learning workflow. Overall, we show that AD on low-level IR such as LLVM in fact can be fast, and this is possible because of the optimization done before AD. Additionally, Enzyme is able to perform high-performance cross-language AD by leveraging LLVM's wide variety of languages which are supported. We're now planning on open sourcing Enzyme, so please visit enzyme.mit.edu for more information, and please join our mailing list. We also hope to upstream this as an LLVM project in the near future as well. Additional future work includes extending Enzyme to be able to support parallelism, as well as GPU automatic differentiation, since LVM does support GPU instructions. We also hope to explore additional AD-specific optimizations, since there's a whole host of other types of codes that are now being optimized, and I'm sure there's a whole host of new optimizations we might want to perform on them. Overall, I'd like to thank several people uh, who have provided help in various ways, be it bug tests, helping look at this presentation and paper, and many other ways. I personally was supported by a DOE CSGF fellowship, and this research was broadly supported by a grant from Los Alamos National Lab as well as from the Air Force. Of course, all views and conclusions here are those of myself and not of the US government. Thanks. Any questions?